The curtain's about to rise, but wait. Let's see how Peter arrived here, how this star was made. He was born Peter Woolnow on February 10, 1944, in the small Australian town of Tenterfield. He was raised by his mother, but it was his grandfather who was to have the major influence on his life. So, picture this. I, my, my grandfather, he's sitting on the veranda, sewing saddles, and me next to him, little eight-year-old boy, tap dancing. <laughs> I, instead of going into saddle making, I guess I went into storytelling. The late George Wolno, he worked on High Street, lived on manners. 52 years he sat on his veranda and made his saddle. My mom if you had played a lot of records. And, and rock and roll came in when I was about 12, so that just fired me up. And I could play the piano, so I was always the one that. Um, got called in to play the piano everywhere. Peter began playing in nightclubs, and by the time he was 17, he was a star in his own country. He teamed up with Chris Bell, and they performed as the Allen Brothers. They traveled to the Orient, which was, in the early 60s, the next leap for Australian entertainers. We were working at the Hong Kong Hilton when Judy Garland was there, and she caught the show and thought we were real good. And, and uh, then we became friends, and she came to Tokyo with us and uh, called us from London when she got to London and said, well, do you want to come over here and be my opening act? And so we said, sure. And then we went from London, that's where I met Liza, and then Liza and I got engaged in London, and we uh, came to America after that. Peter and Liza Minnelli were married in March 1967, but over the next three years, they drifted apart. Liza was headed for Hollywood stardom, and Peter was going in a different, more introspective direction. After their divorce in 1970, his career as a serious songwriter began in earnest. Back when we were dumb, when did we become so smart and learn to break each other's heart? Look how all our dreams came true and see how I In the early 70s, Peter began playing small Greenwich Village clubs such as Reno Sweeney's, where he built a cult following. It was during those years that Dee Anthony, one of the most powerful managers in the music business, first saw him. I thought he was a fabulous songwriter, and he just had what I usually look for in a talent. He has like an inner feeling and honesty with an audience. That was a turning point for both men. In 1975, Dee began managing Peter's career, and that spring, a song emerged that was soon heard around the world. Peter was now a major star, touring throughout the world. In both 1981 and 82, he sold out Radio City Music Hall in two historic series of concerts. He shared an Oscar for best song for the theme of the film, Arthur, and even found time for a now famous commercial. Finger. He learns to sing, I'm in trouble. Stop eating the piano. In the fall of 84, Peter was back in New York rehearsing for his Carnegie Hall debut. And Real secure on those top notes. I mean, just really. The third one, especially. I couldn't even say good evening to the audience for three years. I mean, now I walk out and you can't shut me up on a, on a stage. But... 